And with that, in the Cellini household, our favorite graphic, it is now time for Convince Me. You've seen it on Fridays, on Saturdays, and it's once again here on Sundays, so check your local listing. Um, this is where we talk about players, topics, teams, and the fellows try to convince me that their point of view is the right one, and they are awarded points accordingly. Let's play our game. Rick Fox, uh, which is the most impressive part about this triple-double run for Russell Westbrook? Is it the number that he has, nine points, rebounds, assists, or other? What is the most impressive aspect of this stretch of games? For me right now, it is the rebounding. Uh, he is 10th in the league at 10.5, and at the guard position, the fact that he is able to not only rebound the basketball to make up the triple-double, because I get the scoring and I get the assists, but the fact that he's living in double digits rebounding when big men in our game fight to average these type of numbers. And he's doing it to the realm of some games, 18, 16. So, so you know how like, tough it is to get 14, hey, 15 hey, rebounds. 100%. I had a career high. One game I had 16 rebounds. And I mean, and that was, I think, six of them were off of free throw misses. So, you know, so it was, he is intently making it a point to be a big time rebounder for this team. So, I mean, the fact that he's doing that is remarkable to me. Bonesy. Uh, I'm going to go with minutes, 35.7 minutes. It would be the most in his career, but in that, his conditioning, is, it, is conditioning count for you? Do you need a I number? said other. I said other. Okay, so the other part is the conditioning of Russell Westbrook, but 35.7 minutes, leading the league in usage rate at 41%. Like, that is an insane number right now for Russell to be doing that. And I think uh, Oscar Robertson, in the year that he averaged a triple-double back in 61-62, Oscar played about 44 minutes a night. So for Russell to be playing less time, to be grabbing more rebounds and doing what he's doing, uh, I think is just absolutely phenomenal. He is the only guy in the league right now, Vince, that's averaging 100 touches per game. Amazing. There's no other guy in the league doing it. Russ I think James Harden's second to a lot of these things that Russell's doing, but uh, Russell at 100 touches per game and getting the job done. I'll go minutes and okay. conditioning. Yeah, it, this is a tough one, survey says. No, I, if, if I had to go from one, that is a great answer. Uh, however, I think it's rebounding as well because these are not your guard variety rebounding nights. When you get into double figures, it's great. But he has hit a 14, 15, 16, 18 rebound games for a point guard running the offense as well. But minutes is right behind that. But, Rick, I do have to award you Thank the you. first point. So, well played both. Uh, this is another esoteric question that I pose. Uh, LeBron James, after a Thursday route at the hands of the Clippers, said afterward, the honeymoon stage is over. You guys are both past champions in the league, so put a finer point on this and tell me, Brent, when, when is the honeymoon really over? Or when do you realize it? When should it be over? Convince me what that time is after a championship. Uh, I'll probably lose my point on your question, Vince, and I have no problem doing that because the points really mean jack squat. Um, <laughs> but the year that we won in 2005, as I'm already getting the buzzer, uh, the Spurs next year, we won 63 games. Uh, after the 2007 championship, we won 56 games. Uh, and playing for Coach Pop, he had a way to make everything that we were doing still kind of a game within the game as the season went on. There wasn't a lot of staleness to what it is we were trying to do or trying to build on in the way that we've seen Cleveland over the course of the last few games. It, it, I don't know how to answer that question because I didn't experience the malaise of what it is that Cleveland has seen given their losses. So you really, your answer is no, no I'm, answer? I'm kind of, I don't really have an answer for you other than they still are the best team in the East. Um, and I would say, when do you realize the honeymoon is over? I'm not quite sure. When you realize it and when it should be over are probably two different things because when you've won a championship for the first time, and we did this in 2000, we came back, uh, for, some, for most of us, the honeymoon ended when we got the ring on ring that night. It was okay. You know what? We've wrapped up a summer of celebration. We've been, uh, we've been, we've been patted on the back all summer long, and then now it's time to go to work. Why? It's a completely different roster. Last year's efforts doesn't you know, support that we'll win a championship this year. We have to go out and earn this, right? I would say that the honeymoon should be over after one trip around. You visit your, 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 your arenas and you say hi to people, but that first month where, where LeBron is stepping in right now and calling for focus is probably the appropriate amount of time because 
yes, you get that ring and you, and you get celebrated and, and you're still a little high from that, but now you got to go to work. So look, December 1st. Okay. Well, look, look, can I look. just bring up one other sure. point, Vince? We, we talked about Cleveland and, and sort of the holes that are in the roster. I mean, they have some things that they need to figure out at this point. They're sitting at 13-5, and five, but they had some losses of some guys who were grind guys for them. A, a lot of heart from Matthew Della Vadova, some inside presence in Mozgov. Now, these weren't the leading scorers on the team, but they were reliable players. And the team has yet to really figure out exactly how it is that they're going to make up for the loss of what they represent as teammates, not the statistics, but what they represent as teammates for this team. They've not yet done that. They have not. And, and the fact that you were both from just storied franchises and can't fathom a honeymoon of any sort, I'm going to split the point for you. Just yes. because you guys have put, although the points don't mean much, right? <laughs> now. But apparently now they do that you're on the board. <laughs> now that I've got half a point, yes. All right, uh, and we Very move on. Uh, convince me that Kevin Durant, the signing with the Warriors aside, that the top move of the year was Dwayne Wade to the Chicago Bulls. I like it. Yeah, Dwayne going home has paid dividends for the Bulls. I don't think they truly, uh, maybe heading into free agent, thought that, that, would, they, that he would end up there. But you said aside from Kevin Durant. Yeah. So, so I, I would say this has been uh, the biggest move because of what it meant to Chicago, losing Derrick Rose, Noah moving on, bringing in someone that this city can connect to. Uh, someone that really wants to be there and understands championship level basketball, which Chicago Bulls organization has been starved from the last years. They're, they're dying to, to have that conversation revitalized. And, and Dwayne has been healthy, so the start to the season has paid dividends for them. He's really set a tone there he in has. Chicago, and I think he's said and done all the right things in coming back home. I'd really love to go off the grid here and bring up two names that are coaches, one in Luke Walton and the other one in Mike D'Antoni, uh, Mike D'Antoni, I won't do that. I'll stick with the player aspect, Vince, and tell you that I think that the move that Utah made with George Hill mm, coming over to mm, be the point guard mm. is probably the, the best offseason move that we've seen so far this year. He's shooting a career-best 53%. He's knocking down threes. He's providing uh, leadership from a position that Utah has been looking for for the past couple seasons and for Quinn Snyder and that group to make the next step to maybe be a home court team that gets themselves into the playoffs, possibly as high as the fourth seed this year. George Hill is the guy that could lead the way for that team. Well, since you went outside the box there, Brent, and since you're such a fancy test taker, <laughs> I'm going to give you a point on that because you yeah. did you thought outside the box. So I'll, t I'll take that. I'll take George Hill. Very That's good. a good one. Was, Another I, guy has to stay healthy and stay in the lineup. Yeah. But you're right. He has definitely filled if the void. If he continues to do what he did before getting hurt and missing no these 11 or 12 games, uh, George Hill I have you guys down at 1.5 each. How many games has Dwayne Wade missed? Well, that's good. I think he's rested. Not, is he rested? Is he rested? Game? Maybe, uh, maybe two. Maybe two. Yeah. So, George is young, right? George Hill's pretty young. Yeah, he's a hurt, though. He's got an injury. It's not just rest. I, I, rest I think safe. the question I pose, Wade, is it, it, it goes past so many levels of just playing. It's it's community. It's, you know, revi yeah. an organization. I, I really do. I really like that so aspect. He, Dwayne's only team. missed two games. It's 1-5-1-5. One five, one five. That's really wild. So you got the point out of the box. So. All right. Yeah, uh, he just uh, wanted to tie. Finally <laughs> this. Um, convince me, Bones. Thursday, Houston and Golden State chuck up 88 three-point attempts. That's the most in an NBA game. Uh, convince me, is this either, is this fun? Yeah. Or is this troubling for the league? That the, the people the are shooting this? 88 threes in a game. Oh, this is awesome. What, are you <laughs> kidding me? I mean, really? gone are the days of the big man in the post and the slow down one-on-one -on -one play, and guys are chucking up threes, and we're seeing incredible numbers. The Warriors win 73 games because they can shoot the three-point shot. That's, that's a historical mark, by the way, Vince, 73. Nobody had ever done that before. Um, we're seeing expansion in positions as five men are starting to shoot the three ball. And really what I, I mean, not to make light of it, what I like is that it celebrates players' ability rather than a coach getting creative to make offense happen. What we get to see with the three-point shot is a skill which is what this game Wait is a minute, predicated you mean guys on. that cut coming off screens or guys that cut to the I'm basket? not saying that's not a skill right. but the accuracy of shooting the long ball to go into these huge arenas and to sit in your seat and to watch guys cast the ball off from 25 26 feet and be able to drill those shots like their layups to me celebrates the skill 
of the game, and I love it. I'm all for it. All right, uh, but you know the the other side of this is that you may be hunting threes. Uh, yes, and and it is troubling fun, uh, <laughs> it, 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 because because the, the game the game is a skilled game, and not 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 everyone really I think, although they may be taking those threes, can make those threes. And what you find is is that the Warriors, the Rockets, they're filled with players that actually have some of the best three point making skill sets in our game, but not every team has those players. And so when when they start to shift into this mode of, well, you know what, maybe we need to be taking 30, 35 shots. I can think of a number of different teams that in the, in the beginning of the seasons and in, in, in media day, coaches have come out and said, yeah, we're going to run more, we're going to take more threes. And then they get about a month into the season and realize that taking threes and making threes are two different things. And so there's a whole generation. Now we have our big men shooting threes. Some of them our, our three-point shooters, they can actually make them. But who's rebounding the ball now? Who's protecting the paint? Russell Westbrook and, and, is rebounding the ball, Obviously, apparently. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so for me, it's troubling because uh, the game has gone the way of the off-season um, pickup style basketball game where it's the first look you take it. Mm. You, don't, you, know, you don't want to tax the paint. You, like, you, you like? live on the perimeter. I'm not buying that and, at all. I mean, you, it's made the game so much more entertaining and exciting. I, I, I said mean, it's troubling many, fun. It's troubling well, fun. How many games, I like watching how it. many games would your team down by 15 points with two minutes to go, three right. minutes to go, would you be able to come back and get into the game? But you, you know want why your big guys, down by 15? You want your big guys shooting a lot of 12-footers with hands in their faces? Or would you say, you know what, the three is better for us if you're not dunking the ball. We've got a chance to offensive rebound the ball, put the ball back in. It creates more points. It's here to stay. It's revolutionized the game. It's not going away. I know it's In 1979, important. thank you, Chris Ford. You took and made the first three <laughs> Celtics versus Rockets. We're not going back. Hey, well, what the dunk's going to be is a has-been well, shot. Well, look. I, we won't have top ten dunks. Anymore. I'm with you guys. This is like spread offense in, in, in football, and we've got to throw one-yard passes now. We've abandoned anything that's a structured run-type offense with the pass. Yeah, I, the I'm, maybe I'm a little get off my lawn. Old guy, but I'm, I'm a little troubled by the 88 threes in the game. I don't want folks to lose who they are and the league to lose what it is. But we're moving in that direction. So it's like Pop says, you know what? You either evolve or you die. So you know what, Bones? Let's start making four-point shots and five-point shots. Now you're getting ridiculous. Oh, now I'm crazy? Hey. Yeah, More ridiculous than convince me? I think not. <laughs> well, who got the point? It's one and a half, one and a half. Rick did. Yeah, we, it's a trouble. <laughs> there it is. Points don't matter. You're a berry. You're a berry. Under all of that smooth exterior, you're a berry. We'll be right back with more. And uh, that's terrible. Oh, that's goodness. Terrible. I, got, I got it, brother. I got it. Look at this. Take another look at this. Watch this reaction. I'm sure the league office is going to hear about this. <laughs> and we're going in your pocket, buddy. <laughs>